Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for uh, what is today? Wednesday the 27th. Uh, there's, uh, and after today, there's only two more trading sessions uh, to go uh, for 2023. This will also be my last video of the year, um, and then we'll start fresh for, uh, for the next year. Um, if you are a member of Tribeca Trade Group, we're also giving uh, a webinar that will be uh, on, I believe, on Wednesday of next week. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, goals and what our thought process is for next year. You know, what we're going to be basically looking to do um, for next year, you know, in terms of goals, in terms of tweaks to our trading plan. It doesn't matter how long you've been trading for. There's always improvements, right? There's nobody out there that is um, traded this year perfectly, right? There's, and if you talk to anybody who is acting like that, um, they're probably the people that you want to unfollow, right? Because as long as I've been doing this and, and the more that I talk to traders who trade for full time and have been doing it for a long time, right? There's always things that, um, that you are trying to do to kind of get better, right? And, um, and make some improvements. Improvements. There's never a point in time where you get to, oh, I've traded for 10 years full time and I know everything. You may know a lot, but um, you're still battling with psychological issues and, um, you know, um, you know, every day, you know, in terms of, um, you know, trying to execute your trading plan perfectly. Um, and when I say psychological issues, I mean, you know, things, <laughs> things, the voices like in the back of your mind that tell you like, oh, you should sell now instead of, you know, um, uh, you know, riding the trend or, or basically, um, you know, doing too much, trading too much when you should be trading less. Those are the types of things that I'm referring to. And I can go on and on about those things. Um, so let me uh, talk a little bit about, um, so so first of all, you know, what we're going to talk about next week, right, is, is you know, a little bit of what the valuers are going to tell us for next year, right? This is the valuary for, for the, uh, for the S&P futures for this year. Um, and it becomes very um, significant in terms, because it contains, all of the price all of all of the volume from last year which was you know obviously 2022 Right. And then this value area, which you could see, is still being formed. There's still two more trading days, so it's not completely uh, done. Uh, but you could see the shape isn't going to change that much. Right. And we'll talk about what that means. You know, certainly IWM, by the way, when we look at the weekly chart, right, look at how significant that was earlier in the year. Right. We ran right into that and failed. Right. When the second time, same thing. Right. And then the third time was the charm. Now, also notice that the support hold held, you know, and there was a little bit of a, a break there for a week and then a snapback move. And, um, you know, IWM has been very interesting over the last couple months. And um, you could see what that's going to um, how that's going to line up. So we'll talk about that as well. Right. And then, of course, we're going to talk about stocks like Zoom Video that have a super slim. <laughs> Look at the value area, how slim this is. Right. Which means that this has been trading in a range. Right. So we're going to we're going to talk about stocks like that. We're going to start talk about stocks like Hood, right, which also have a very slim value area and have been going sideways for a while. Remember, that's how a lot of stocks bottom. It's not there's so many times that I see people putting out like a Baba chart or some other chart saying, oh, my God, this name is going to reverse. Um, you, what happens is sometimes the name will go up for a couple bucks and then it will resume its trend, you know, to the downside. You know, we could look at that chart, too. Right. Because I know everybody is talking about that. But who knows if that stock is going is is done going down. It may rally for a couple points, right? Everything could rally for a couple points in a downtrend, but it's it doesn't look like it's spent enough time basing to me, right? I mean, it's just almost making fresh lows. Now it could go sideways here and maybe get into the value area, but you know, and those will be things that we'll watch. You know, I'm open to Baba, you know, doing that, but um, it doesn't look like it's been what's what usually works for a name that's been in a downtrend for as long as Bob has been in a downtrend for is that it'll go sideways for a long time and people forget about it, right? Kind of like those two other names that I mentioned. I don't think many people are talking about those names now, but it usually a name will have to go sideways for a while and then begin to kind of move up, 
right? And I think that's what you're seeing with um, with some stocks, right? And that's called, um, you know, you can use stage analysis, right? Like stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. I don't know, you know, I don't know if Bob is done with that yet, but um, but it'll be a stock to watch, right? We'll be paying attention, especially to the underperformers, you know, in the, in the beginning of the year. So we'll be talking a lot about that next week. So make sure, um, you know, I brought up the website, uh, make sure that if you are um, not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, first of all, you can get a Glant, you can get a free um, look um, at you know our watch list and how I put together um, our watch the watch list. Um, although you won't be getting all the charts because you won't be in Slack, but you know here's where you can get involved. And I would say um, you know I, I would say if you are looking for new information, right, and for to kind of get better at your trading, um, try it for a month, and this way you can come to next week's webinar. And then if you don't like it, you know you can cancel, right, and then you know go go on with what you're doing. But um, as the year kind of gets gets done, and I'm going to talk about today's price action and so forth. But I think what's really important, you know, and again, I, I begin to kind of, uh, I start to have my deep thoughts on the year and, um, and what I want to do next year. I mean, number one, like today's price action, very, very slow. Right. And that's just sometimes what it's going to be like. Right. Now we did resolve higher. We had, we had a nice close at the end of the day and um, some whippy price action. And, and really like, that's what we have in the last week of the year, because um, there's just not a lot of market participants that are trading. A lot of people are taking vacation this time of year. So, it, um, you know, remember last week, right. There was, everybody was saying the market fell and everybody was looking for a reason. Nobody liked the reason that, is what it is, is that there's low liquidity, right? And when there's going to be a big sell program, when somebody's, you know, getting out of uh, some risk and the market is super overbought and people are going to, you know, tag on to that, right? And then, of course, people are going to speculate to the downside, but everybody wants a culprit, right? Oh, it was zero day options. That's what was the reason for, for it. Um, that's such that's such BS, but I get it. People liked, oh, that's what it was, right? People want a villain or a culprit. Right? That's what it was. It wasn't the fact that the market was super, super overbought. That had nothing to do with it, right? And that at some point, when the market gets super, super overbought, folks are going to take profits, right? And that kind of goes back to today, right? And what you're going to see probably the next two days, if there is some some type of end of month or end of year type of rebalance that some, you know, um, pensions may be doing some some rebalancing right it's going to probably kick around the market a bit now i don't have a crystal ball but you can kind of just if you've been observing what's been going on with the market it it is moving a bit whippy because a lot of people are on vacation so that's that's the first thing that I, that i wanted to cover in today's video is just to kind of realize that um as we end up the year um, what I did, you know, what I did today was just unwind some positions because I won't be in the office, um, you know, full time for the next two days. I'll be taking two half days basically uh, for uh, Thursday and Friday. So I won't be monitoring my positions, but it's not really worth risking um, if there is some type of a sell program that's going to push the market around. Right. So that's just called being prepared, you know, rather than reacting when it's too late. Right. We also talked about how you can kind of hedge with with a like a really low cost like put fly for for the end of the year, just so that you have that you can participate. Right. Because I think the Al Almanac Trader, which um, you know, I, I like his work. I put this out earlier. I talked about this um yesterday. Whoops, what's happening here? Sorry about that. Something's something's not right in here. Or with my mouse is is wrong. There we go. But you could see um, the last three trading days, um, and the last specifically the last trading day for the Nasdaq has been down 17 of 23, 17 of the last 23 years. Right. So you have some information right, that you could use to your advantage, right, to know some probabilities, right, the market is always about probabilities, right, so knowing that the last day of the year, NASDAQ has been done 17 of 23 years, do you want to be looking for big upside? Well, you can, I mean, it's not, there's not a 0% chance, there's six out of 23 uh, years that the market went up. So there, there's something there, but will I be playing for big upside knowing those stats? No, I won't. Uh, most of my positions will be closed out. Um, I'll still have a couple swing trades on to enter the year of 2024, but um, there's no reason to, to mess with it when you've got stats like um, like that. All right. So that's was today's price action. I'm quite uh, boring, but we did resolve higher. Um, what did well today? Um, 
the diamonds actually did well today, right? You had a couple of things like Walmart was doing very well. Um, it kind of looked like early on that it was going to be more of like a value, um, you know, value groups, you know, such as things like Walmart and so on and so forth that were going to do better today. And um, for the most part, they did. The crypto stocks have been amazing. Um, I think they are really running into what could be buy the rumor, sell the news. Once a Bitcoin ETF does get approved, right? Remember, that's the aid. That's how a lot of times how investing works, right? Is always buy the run up, and um, and then when the news actually comes out, because I think they might be making a decision um, possibly at the end of the year. Now, I don't, I don't know that for 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 certainty, but when you look at what's going on, you know, these names are all squeezing. Um, and pretty decently. So I wouldn't be surprised at this point, if once that Bitcoin ETF comes out, that you actually, some of these things might um, might take a breather. Now, I don't know if they sell off, but I mean, look at this. This is, I own this in the TTG trend portfolio. We put this in a, a little over a month ago and um, look at this thing. You know, this is from 21 bucks basically to 32, right? And I think most of that is on the um, the speculation that, um, that a, that a Bitcoin ETF is, is going to be improved. So, I mean, that's a huge gain. This this was your biggest, this was up another 4% today, right? It's pretty crazy because get, Bitcoin was up 3%, right? And these um, Bitcoin miners and some of the other players in this group are going up much faster than that. So again, the reason why I don't know that for sure about buy the rumor, sell the news, I just know that principle works in trading over and over and over again. <laughs> so, um, you know, be, be mindful of that. Um, you know, you can, I know that, you know, sometimes the crypto investors are super passionate, but you can take some profits. And then if the if it goes down a little bit, then you can kind of add back a bit. All right. So that was what really um, outperformed today. And then, um, you know, I'll talk about some of the stocks that, that I thought were really um, were really interesting. You know, I came into today and, and the the cyber software names were all kind of acting like they were turning higher, but they kind of um, didn't do much today, right? They started higher and and you could see CrowdStrike. I'm still looking for 265 um, in my swing trade. Um, I also think that Zscaler um, uh, can get to this VPOC up here, which it almost did today, right? Um, that almost did. And then, then a couple of the other ones, right, that everybody seems to be talking about. ESTC kind of failed a little bit for the day. So that's where my head was at, as well as the semi names too, um, which um, did okay today. I was impressed with AMD. Right. So AMD, um, very strong in the semi space, up another 1.8%. Notice, you know, there's so many names that are doing this, by the way, that moved up, rested a little bit, and are curling back up and breaking out to new highs. Uber is another one, has nothing to do with the semiconductors, right? Just spent some time, right? It's, you know, from the time that it made those highs, this was basically uh, tw uh, the 12th of December, you know, hit this high. And then for the last couple of weeks, it's been doing this, it's just been digesting. You know, there really hasn't been a major push until until today, right? So um, I like this setup, right? Looking for the next leg higher in Uber. Um, I'm going to talk a minute about some of my strategy too in just a second. Builder is another one too, right? Where it had a bunch of those inside days. Remember, I reviewed this stock last week and talked about how many, how many days it kind of had an inside day off of this, right? Now resolving higher. Right, kind of like it did in here. Remember, I so if you watch my videos, um, Builder was one that I the setup that I went over. Um, I am long that name. Celsius is a, is a new name for me that I got long. You know, again talking about having patience. This thing hasn't done anything, and um, you know, I think since it reported earnings, it's been um, it's kind of been a non-event um, this stock, but it's starting to kind of gear back up a little bit. So um, as I go through some of these names, and uh, you know, a couple other ones that I'm looking at too is are Lily. Lily's trying to turn the corner here. I would watch 582.29. And then the other name too, Novo Nordisk, right, is spent some time a little, you know, digesting here just above the value area and is trying to turn higher, right? I look for my signals both on that daily chart and in the one hour. As long as it stays above 103.53, I think it's, um, I think it's interesting. 
Um, what else do I have? Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's enough stocks. But you know, really, what I'm what I was I was just uh, talking to another trader about this. You know, what I tried to do, right? And we go to, you know, a stock like like Uber, for example, right? Is basically, you know, and that's going to be a big part of next year. Is just looking for stock super stocks, right? Like this has been, right? Uber, what's Uber up this year? I know there's going to be so many notes that go out talking about performance, right? For what certain names have done, but what is what has Uber done for the for this year? Right? It's up 155 percent, right? So that's kind of the goal of next year is to find more stocks that are doing this. And you know, I'll tell you when you when you get into a stock, you know, when you get into a trade, you don't know that a stock is going to go up 155 percent for the year. But what you try to do is stay in stocks that are trending. Right, you really try to try to um, stay in them for for as long as you possibly can, right? That's that's the whole goal, right? And to have like you're not going to find like a hundred of these stocks, but maybe you can find five or six that are going to really make your year, right? DKNG was was one stock that's has kind of stalled out and fizzled, but that's okay, right? But that made a lot of, you know, that did very well for a lot of people, right? With this move over here, hasn't done much since people are waiting for it to kind of wake up again. Some stocks will, some stocks won't. Right. And then it's really, you know, you know, so some of these things you can kind of put on autopilot, autopilot a little bit, right. You know, you, you keep your, your trailing stop as a name goes up and you really try to sit for the whole ride. Right. And then if something changes, right, then you have to alter the plan. Right. And that's why I'm still in CrowdStrike and, and looking for that 265 VPOC. There really hasn't been a reason for me to take this stock off. Right. So I've been holding it and holding it. And um, sometimes there's just it's quiet and it's boring and there's nothing going on. Right. In this name, like for the last week. But it's just kind of it's just kind of resting right now. Right. There's no reason to sell it. It's not breaking down. And, um, you know, it's also still overbought, so it's still working that off. But really, that's that's the one of the goals for next year is just to, to find these stocks and, um, you know, and stay in them. And, you know, when I say find these stocks, right, it's not like you have to go on a hunt, right? It, because you don't know once they're starting to move, whether it's going to happen, right? So that's why, you you, you know, you hold some, some you know, port. Uh, you know, maybe a portfolio or just some swing trades, depending how the market is, is acting, right? And you kind of think of them as candidates, like, hey, this one could be a really good stock for this year. But you but you never know um, once you're in the stock. But, you know, and as as the year goes on or, or, or the month or the week, right, you you get out of the ones that, that are not acting like this. So it becomes a little bit of a process of elimination, but you know, you have to be okay with, um, <laughs> with selling stocks that aren't winners all the time. Right. Cause like I said, right. I have stocks all the time that I try and if they don't work and then they start moving lower, you get out of them. Right. And the whole thing is just, it's okay to have those small losses. Right. Now nobody wants a lot of losses, but that's the process that you go through and saying, Hey, this one was not it. Right. It's kind of like um, somebody told me this about about something else. But this is a bad comparison, but it's it's the end of the year and I'm kind of making jokes. But it's kind of like dating a little bit, too. Right. You date someone for a little while. You figure out whether you like them or you don't. You don't you, you know, you, you don't like them. You break up with them. You break up with the stock and you move on and you try to find, you know, one that's really going <laughs> that is really going to work well. Um, you know, in the end. And, um, and again, you, you know, so I'll get away from that comparison, but with the stock, then you, your job is to, is to, is to sit and monitor and wait and watch for anything that changes significantly um, and know that not every stock is going to work out. So anyway, I, I hope that helps. The reason why I kind of go through that a little bit is because I'll tell you, I don't think people, when they get into trading, really they have an idea of what they're looking to accomplish. Like besides make money, everybody gets. Oh, I, I want to make money. Okay, well, how are you? How are you going to do that? Right? Is it? You know, I get I get a number of people who think following option activity is is like the holy grail for them, and then it takes them a little while once they lose money for <laughs> trying to do that strategy. Right? There's so many traders who go through that. They think, oh my god, I got to follow this order because they know the 80 percent 90 percent of the order flow that you see on the screen no matter how aggressive it's bought it does they don't know so i have to do a lot of it you know in my trading room I, I have to do a lot of 
untraining of these things that people learn on Twitter, right? And then it's funny. Sometimes I talk to traders, they're like, I'm like, look at this stock. You saw option activity in it, in it yesterday and the stock's down three, 4% today. What are you going to do? You're going to hold on to it because you saw bullish option activity. And then they'll come up with an excuse, right? They'll basically say, oh, well, you know, maybe they were disguising the order. You just have to get used to that. <laughs> a lot of times the traders who are executing that orders, they're going to be wrong. And people hate that. People hate to hear that the order flow is wrong. No, no, no. They, uh, that's not what, you know, they, they went wrong. Maybe they, um, they were trying to disguise the order or, um, you know, they, uh, they sold stock or something. No, hedge funds are wrong. If you're following order flow, but a lot of it is from hedge funds. Are a lot of hedge funds beating the S&P this year? No, they're not. So you're following order flow that um, is a lot of times, you know, underachieving, right? And um, they're they're losing out. So again, there is there there now there is a small quantity of orders that they do know, know something, and that screws people's minds up because then they think, oh my god, you know, I caught this order, and boom, there was an upgrade or there was a drug study, and the stock went up. Oh my god, I'm going to keep doing that. And then what I find is a lot of traders they keep doing that. And then they give back all the profits. So why am I going through this with you? Because it is what I go through with a lot of traders that I see come through who think that they're going to follow option activity. And that's not really a great plan, in my opinion, right? You've got to have a better plan than that. Now, you could use option uh, uh, flow for momentum and you could use it for trade for trading ideas. That's perfectly fine. But to think that you're going to stay in order, stay in orders just because or stay in a trade just because you saw option activity and you're going to get anchored to the name and not look at anything else, right? You're going to have a very difficult time, in my opinion. So in any event, we're going to go through more of this on Wednesday of next week and talk about more of our trading plan and, um, and the technicals as well. All right. And where there could be some good opportunities for next year. Guys, have a great night. Um, hope you had a Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year, because, again, this will be the last uh, public video of this year. And um, I'll be back next year with uh, the public videos. Have a great uh, have a great night, everybody.